Hi all, I'm Ollie, this is Simply Stitchy. Now I've heard it mentioned on online forums that the hand crank is the world's most perfect machine. Without any faults it's practically perfect in every way, a bit like Mary Poppins. And that anyone who thinks that it's got any disadvantages at all has got to be nuts. Hand cranks give us that link to sewing's past. Built at a time before electricity was available mainstream, they're seen to be heavy duty, built to last, simple and easy to use. In today's video I'm going to burst that bubble and add a large dollop of realism to the romantic world of the hand crank. Follow me in. Now I've been sewing for years with hand cranks, treadles and with electric machines and because of that I had to think long and hard about how I was going to show you the disadvantages and slightly negative aspects of the hand crank. You probably think that I can use a hand crank with one hand tied behind my back. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to tie my hand behind my back because I haven't got any rope. I'm going to use the hand crank one handed and I'm going to use my left hand. My right hand I'm going to stick in the back pocket. And as I go through working the hand crank with just one hand, I'm going to mention and show you the pitfalls and the disadvantages as and when we get to them. And what I thought would be really fun is if you watching at home, if you spot the downsides before I get to them, let me know in the comments. And as a full disclosure, just so that we know and we're clear from the outset, I'm right handed. Let's get into it. First thing we've got to do is get the case off the machine. Now at the minute it's locked so we're going to have to unlock it and to do that I've got a screwdriver. This particular um, machine doesn't have a key for the case um, and if you've got any bent wood cases like this one that you've lost the key to just grab yourself a flathead screwdriver. What we're going to do is we're going to pop the screwdriver in the little hole where the key goes and turn it. No, not that way. And turn it. Ah, that's got it to unlock the case. Now normally I'd do that two-handed. It's okay, I managed it. I will take the case off. It goes up and just lifts off the back. Now we're just going to pop that on the floor. And here she is. You've seen this machine before in the video where I was comparing um, hand cranks to treadles. This one, I'll put a link in the description box to that one for you. The first thing that we're going to need to do with this machine is obviously get it ready to sew. And to do that, we need to put the hand crank itself into position. I'm going to turn the machine around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to turn the machine around so you can see what I'm doing. Hello, puss. Mind your toes. Oh D, sorry puss. Right, here's the hand crank and all you do is you lift it up and click it into place. Now I need to put the machine back so I can actually sew with it. <clears throat> Disadvantage number one right there. These machines were built out of cast iron which makes them incredibly heavy. Even the hand crank that was actually designed to be a portable option can weigh anywhere from 30 to 40 pounds, which is about I don't know, 13 kilograms or something like that. That's a lot of weight to be carrying around, even if you're using two hands. If you've got any kind of upper body strength issues, these are going to be a nightmare to move. Onwards and upwards, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to thread the top of the machine. I've got my thread, I'm going to pop that on the thread spool. Oh, I'm going to take it out the little groove at the bottom first, hang on a sec. That's it. <laughs> Butterfingers. Right, I'm going to pop it on the thread stand. And we're going to start threading the machine. Right, we come to this little hook here. 
we go around the tension discs. And unlike Grandma, this one's got a little curly thing there, so that we need to go around that. Oh, missed. In it goes. There you go. Okay, next we want to go through the take up lever. And into this little um, thread guide right there, and then down to the needle. The thread guide on the top of the needle bar is on the left hand side of the machine, which means this machine threads from left to right. Disadvantage number two this machine threads from left to right. Not all hand cranks do that, not all treadles do that. Some machines of this age actually thread from right to left, like the Wheeler and Wilson in the background. Now, the main problem with having a needle going from side to side instead of front to back is it's incredibly difficult to see the eye of a needle if it's not actually right in front of you. If it's on the side of the needle, you have to contort yourself. <laughs> To try and actually see that needle to thread it. It's a lot easier to thread if the hole's right in front of you and you're going like that. Now normally these days I either have to use one of these to thread these older machines or I rely on the automatic needle threaders that I've got on my modern machines because, got to be honest, I'm getting on a bit in years and the older you get the more your eyesight changes so you can see things that are far away clear as day but anything that's small and right in your face it's like uh can't see it at all so for me a disadvantage number three with these machines is the fact that they don't have automatic needle threaders because they're from an age when automatic needle threaders weren't a thing and I'm not the only person that would find that a bit of an issue. Anyone with any kind of vision impairment is going to find it tricky to thread the needle. Not just because it's going from side to side instead of front to back, but because all sewing machine needles have little tiny eyes. But let's see how we get on, shall we? Right, we're going to go left to right, which means the needle threader has to go in from right to left. Wish me luck, I'm going in. Now this tends to take me quite a while when I'm doing it with two hands, so feel free to talk amongst yourselves for a minute or two. I'm gonna grab a light, hang on a sec. Disadvantage number four. These old ladies, hand cranks, treadles, vintage sewing machines, didn't come with built-in lights, which means it's incredibly difficult to see what's going on in the needle area without having some kind of external light. Now I know you can get light strips that you can um, stick to the underneath of the sewing machine that can make um, it just a little bit brighter down here. You can also buy external lights for single machines in particular that just bolt on to the back or you can do what I'm doing and you can use a craft light. And the main issue with lights that you add to the machine after they've been manufactured is they tend to be electric which Kind of defeats the object of having a people-powered machine, really. But anyway, let's see if I have more luck now. <sighs> got it! Right, all I've got to do is get the thread through it. Okay, so the thread goes through the wire bit on the threader. Just grab that a minute. 
There we go. And then I'm just going to pull that off to the right. Phew. Next thing that we need to do is the bobbin. Here's the vibrating shuttle bullet case. And here's the bobbin. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this in that. Okay, now what you need to do when you're doing the bobbin case is you want to make sure that the thread is coming off at the top of your bobbin. Which it's in the middle at the minute, so bear with me for a second. When you've got it the right end, grab your case and pop the bobbin in the case. And like so, there's a little groove just down the side of the, the shuttle and you want that thread to go all the way down to the bottom. Disadvantage number five, right there. These things, vibrating shuttle bobbins in particular, you don't just find them on hand cranks, you can find these on treadles as well. They're incredibly fiddly to, to actually load. Um, they're, they're fiddly to wind too. Um, and to be honest with you, trying to do this one-handed is like eating soup with a fork. But I shall persevere. Right, when you get it to the bottom, What you need to do is pull it down into that little hole and then you pull it back on itself. hand out of my pocket at this point. But I can't actually get what I'm trying to do, you see that little lever, that little spring there? The thread needs to come back up underneath that and lie across the top of the shuttle in order for this thing to, to sew properly. <laughs> These things were designed both hands. This, I'll just grab me uh, snips a minute because that thread is way too long now. Without losing that thread, I'm going to pop that into the bobbin case. Oh, it's turned upside down. There you go. Just pop that in there. Okay, now we're going to pull the bobbin up, and to do that, you always have to hold the top thread and then turn the hand wheel so it lifts that bobbin thread up. So here goes. Oh. Um. I'll just make the thread a bit longer, it'll be fine. Okay, here goes. 
I can't actually turn this and hold the thread at the same time. Oh, did it get it? Oh, I've let go of it now. <laughs> some of this excess thread. Just put that down there for a second. Right. Pull both threads to the back and put this back on. So far so good. Right. Move that out of the way for a minute. I can't get my fabric out from underneath the light. A bit of fabric. Uh, we're just going to stitch it across there, I think. We're going to hold the threads and make a stitch. Ah. Got a bit of a problem. I can't actually hold the threads and reach the hand crank at the same time. Um, And if I do let go of the threads and try and turn the hand crank, as you probably saw earlier in the video, my arm's going right across me, so I can't actually see what I'm sewing. I think I'm going to need to use my head on this one. Got it. I now have another technical hitch. <sighs> disadvantage number seven, which probably is really the same disadvantage as number six, but hey, I can't hold the fabric in a straight line and so with the hand crank, see, it's going off. Take it out. Oh. Don't need a look a minute. Oh, pull that that way. Okay, it's that one. I can't even hold the fabric in one end here. There you go. There. Disadvantage number eight. The biggest problem with a hand crank. They're not necessarily better suited to left-handed people. They're not suited to right-hand people. Hand cranks were designed like most power tools to be used with both hands. The problem is, if you've got any kind of problem with mobility in your hands, carpal tunnel syndrome, RSI, or even if you've got muscle damage in your arm, it's gonna be incredibly difficult to use one of these machines, a hand crank machine, if you haven't got full use of both hands. Now I'm not saying it's impossible, there's always a work around the disadvantages on sewing machines but what I am saying is actually there are machines available today that take out all that kind of hand crank quirks if you like. Today's video is just a light-hearted look at some of the disadvantages that are found in hand cranks, in treadles, in 
old vintage machines in general. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And why not check out some of the other content on my channel using these links coming up any minute now or the ones that I'll pop in the description box for you. Whatever video you go and check out next, I hope to see you back here for the next one. In the meantime, whatever you're saying, whatever you're saying it with, embrace your creativity and have fun. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.